Hey guys, so today I'm going to be cutting up food for my green iguana Charlie here. Um, he was just sleeping. I just turned on his light, so that's why he's all crunched up in the corner here. He was just sleeping. And then I'm also going to be cutting up food for my new bearded dragon, Richard. So, um, they'll be eating the same thing as well as Richard gets uh, dubia roaches. So, um, I'll show you me feeding those as well. Richard's in quarantine. Um, and I believe he has some type of internal parasite. I'm not positive on that. So I make sure everything is um, nice and separated from Charlie here because I don't want Charlie getting out of that. But um, today I'll be feeding him, um, actually I'll make two different weeks uh, food in this video because I filmed one and then I filmed the other a week later. Um, so the first one is going to be acorn squash and endive. And then there was supposed to be escarole, but there wasn't any at the store, so I didn't put that in. Um, and then the second one is carrots, leftover acorn squash, and um, butternut squash, as well as collard greens and mustard greens. So uh, you'll see all of that and how I cut all that up in this video. And I hope you guys enjoy, as well as um, feeding Richard. He really likes... Um, eating the roaches so that's pretty exciting so i now store everything in tubs so that i'm not wasting ziploc bags and i just go ahead and feed them handfuls now rather than um, proportioning out their food before because uh, charlie eats quite a lot now so i get my three tubs ready and then i um, took off the skin of the acorn squash and then cut it into smaller pieces and um, spread it around between the three tubs Okay, so real quick, I'm going to be taking all these things here, um, just the scraps of the acorn squash, and I'm going to be dumping them into this tub. And this is what I consider my inside compost bin, because I have a ton of isopods in here. This is actually the old soil from my iguana's tank um, that's currently not in his tank because his tank was leaking. So um, whenever there's dead plants or anything throughout the room, I just throw them in here and I figure I'll throw that stuff in there. And the nice thing about that is whenever I have seeds from like pumpkins or whatever I cut up for the iguana, if I have seeds, then I'll throw them in my soil and uh, mix them up into there. So then when I use it into a terrarium, eventually there'll be like pumpkin sprouts growing everywhere. And then I can pick those out and feed them to my iguana. So it's kind of using every part um, and that doesn't cost me anything and it um, gives him variety in his diet. So now I'm going to go give my bearded dragon the um, stuff that I cut up. And then I have um, one of the acorn squashes. I'm just going to leave in my room because I don't, I don't think they need to be stored in any type of cool um, environment. And I don't really... Um, I could just leave it upstairs. But I'm just going to like let it chill somewhere in my room here, probably by the plants or something. Um, for the next time that I um, cut them up food. And now I'm going to give Charles my green iguana right here. Um, I'm also going to be giving him some of the uh, diet. So now I'm going to just take a handful of this endive and acorn squash and throw it in here for him. Um, this is quite a bit, but um, yeah. Just gonna give it to him, and then I'll do the same thing for the beard dragon. And he's gonna come right down and eat this. He's hungry. All right, see, he's kind of wary because I'm here. I'll go ahead and close it, and then he can eat on his own. Okay, so while I'll be giving him greens, I also just got a bunch of insects to feed him. Um, a bunch of I have dubia roaches that I breed, and then also. When I got him, um, the people gave me some um, wax worms, which aren't like fantastic at all in any way um, to be feeding to him. While that is true, um, he's also very underweight. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give him, um, finish giving him those. But I just set him up here and he can see him. He's very hungry. Uh, like I said, he's underweight, so um, let me go ahead and give him these. So I have a bunch of roaches, 
have them in this um, calcium powder here, and he's gonna like them. So he'll actually. That's the fun thing about bear dragons, they're very food driven, and they'll even kind of chase you. They'll chase the food. So these have been dubia roaches, and then here is a waxworm. And I feed him with tongs because it's easier to get down into the tank, but also his bite does hurt. Because, <laughs> like I said, he's always very hungry, so if you put your hand in there, he's more than likely to think it's food. Let's see if he'll chase one. Nope, he just didn't eat it right off the ground here. Sorry, he's down here now. Um, so here we have another waxworm. Now we have one more small dubia roach. And then I'm gonna give him a bunch of greens. So I've been trying to make sure that he gets a lot of greens and with the same, if I give him the same greens that I feed the iguana, he's gonna be getting a good variety as well. So. He's not interested in them right now because he wants more insects. And there he goes. He's gonna eat those as well. He's very good about eating um, greens, which is fantastic. He's eaten any greens I've put in front of him so far, um, which has only been kale and, kale's not a great stable food, but I'll feed it every once in a while. Kale and um, romaine. But here is endive and also acorn squash. And I'm gonna go ahead and put water in here. I cleaned his cage earlier and I forgot to replace the water. So like I said, I'm now going to be cutting up a second week's um, worth of food and then I will feed it to him again. I had already cut up the leftover acorn squash and now I'm cutting up the carrots. Then I went ahead and uh, skinned the butternut squash and then cut it up and I used the, the skin and I just took it back down to where the same place I took the um, the rind or the skin of the acorn squash. And then I went ahead and kept it up. I kept the seeds in it. Um, I'm pretty sure they're fine to eat those. And then I went ahead, cut it all up, mixed it together with the carrot and the other squash, broke up the pieces and mixed them together. We're gonna add some to Charles' enclosure. I'm just gonna throw it right on the ground. Um, but I think tomorrow we're gonna be working on his new enclosure and he'll have like a separate area for his food when he has a new enclosure. Let me go ahead throw on quite a bit because I know he's going to be pretty hungry. You can see he's pretty hungry because he's already coming down to eat. So let me go ahead and leave him and then go feed uh, Richard. So let me go ahead and add in his food now. What I've been doing to make sure I, I don't contaminate anything is I'll feed Charles and then I'll grab out a handful of food for Richard and now I'll go put the food thing back and then I'll come down. So I have to do this one handed, which is a little bit difficult. And Richard really likes squash, so I made sure to put in extra squash in his, because um, I know that's what he really enjoys eating, but he really enjoys eating dubia roaches. So I hope you guys enjoyed this feeding video. Down in the description, I will put a list of the different things that I feed, and um, I have it broken up, so I don't feed all of them as like a staple. Um, I switch it up quite a bit um, to give these guys a wide variety. And that's what I really like about um, Richard here is that I can give him a huge variety because he's an omnivore. I can give him both greens and different types of insects. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, put in the comments below. And if you want content, then subscribe. Have a fantastic day.